This video is sponsored by Premium Sound, one of the UK's premier dealers located in Kensington, London, with an online store carrying a comprehensive inventory to cater for a variety of needs. For more details, click the link in the description. I haven't done this in ages. Let's play a little word association game. What three brands, but not speaker brands, will you most associate with British Hi-Fi? Let me give you a second to think. Okay, I'll give you my answer. Name, Lynn and Riga. So I think it's fair criticism for people to say, how can you call yourself a British audiophile without reviewing a Riga product? Riga was founded by Roy Gandhi in 1973, who started his journey by tinkering with a record player he found on a rubbish dump. He's come a long way since then. The name Riga today is pretty much synonymous with turntables, tone arms, phono stages and anything associated with vinyl. But Riga manufacture other components as well. Their amplifiers also have a solid reputation with audiophiles and industry professionals. Why has it taken so long? Well, I did contact Riga shortly after starting this channel and asked them if they wanted to send me something for review. They politely declined. I can't say that I blame them. Anyone can start a YouTube channel. That's one of the great things about YouTube. Back then, like many people, they must have thought, who is this guy? Just some random idiot with a phone. Many of you may still think that to this day, which is fair enough. And I just want to thank all of you that have had to suffer through the poor production values of those early videos. The fact that you still hang around and watch my videos is something that I very much appreciate. In fairness to Riga, they contacted me a couple of years ago and asked me if I wanted to review one of their products. And I've just been so busy with the channel, it's taken this long to do so. I decided to start off with the most affordable Riga amplifier, the IO. Like all Riga products, it's hand built in the UK and may well be the cheapest amplifier you can buy that can make that claim. Many people over the years have requested for me to review a Riga amplifier, so let's not wait any longer. How did I get on with the IO? Like all Riga products, the IO is designed and built at their facility in Essex, England. Not much bigger than a decent sized cigar case, the IO is a genuine desktop solution although not exclusively intended for that application. Measurements are 180 by 68 by 290 millimeters and weight 2.9 kilograms. In old money, that's 7.1 by 2.7 by 11.4 inches and 6.4 pounds. To meet a retail price of 420 pounds, features have been stripped out and power output reduced. Understandably, there's no fancy casework just a combination of matte black chassis and gloss black plastic front fascia. I'm quite happy with the utilitarian design. Controls are simply one button to power up the unit and on the other side of the headphone jack, another to toggle between three inputs. The IO has a nicely weighted Alps volume control and the supplied remote control can be used with other Riga devices. One of the inputs is used to access the inbuilt moving magnet phono stage the other two being conventional RCA line level inputs. It's surprising to find speaker binding posts of such good quality, not the cheap plastic type. The IO has the same phono stage and power amplifier circuits as the more expensive Brio R that's been recently discontinued. Under those heat sinks are Sanken SDD03 Darlington output transistors, not chip based amplifier modules as found on many class AB amplifiers at this price. The power supply has been scaled down from the Brio with a smaller toroidal transformer and less filter capacitance, but the IO is still capable of producing 30 watts per channel into an 8 ohm load. Over the years, I've heard people describe the Riga sound as warm, and other people describe it as lively and energetic. Those two descriptions don't seem to fit together. I wasn't really in a position to confirm or deny. It's been over a decade since I had a Riga amplifier in my listening room, and to tell you the truth, I can't remember how it sounded. Now, after spending days listening to the IO, I can see that both camps of listeners have a point. If there's warmth in the recording, this baby Riga amp is going to reveal it, and that's because it's not stripping out body in the mid-range and harmonics, like so many amplifiers do these days, regardless of price. But I wouldn't describe warmth as the Riga IO's defining characteristic, nor would I say that it's overtly lively or energetic. 
The IO places a little bit of extra emphasis in the upper mid-range, believe it or not. This can even affect the sound stage. There is some layering front to back, but if this is the line of the speakers, where lead instruments and vocals often sit back with many recordings, they're pulled forward. This kind of mid-centric presentation can be tiring if things aren't fleshed out, but they are. The IO also has exceptional timing and resolution, making it the most engaging amplifier I've heard at this price. I suspect it's exactly this combination of body and prat, pace, rhythm and timing, that is the characteristic Riga House sound that many have struggled to describe. The IO's ability to showcase, perhaps I should say show off the mid-range is only possible because the bass is tight with a little bleed through to the mid-range and because treble frequencies are reproduced faithfully. This little baby Riga amplifier has plenty of bass punch with the right speakers and things like cymbal hits and harmonic structures are reproduced with class leading air and decay. The background from which notes emerge and fall away are far darker than they have any right to be for an amplifier at this price. My £449 IOTV XSA3 is outclassed here as it doesn't uncover as much detail and has a thinner tone with a less focused soundstage. The SA3 has more wattage with a sturdier power supply. This results in more bass impact and the ability to produce greater dynamic swings. From a reviewer's perspective, the IOTVX is a useful tool to have hanging around, and that's because it has very good all-round performance and will drive speakers where other amplifiers at this price show that they're running out of steam. My Cambridge Audio AXA35 also surpasses the performance of the SA3 if the speakers aren't a demanding load. I think the £349 amplifier that's regularly on sale for £300 is one of the greatest bargains in hi-fi. Comparisons between the AXA35 and IO are interesting, both represent excellent performance in their market segment, but very different musical presentations. The AXA35 is a richer, much more laid-back sounding amplifier with a wider and deeper soundstage, also a fuller bass and mid-range. In contrast, the IO is narrower and more forward in its musical presentation, but there's more detail and focus to the stereo image. The little Rager amplifier also has a superior sense of timing. Just for context, the IO isn't going to compete with my reference sub £2,000 amplifiers, whether it be the Exposure 2510 or the Wilsonton R8 with any decent set of tubes, but it will hold its own with many sub £1,000 amplifiers. I don't keep any circa £1,000 amplifiers as a reference, and the reason is because of amplifiers like the IO, although I'm not saying that the best amplifiers for around £1,000 won't outperform it. The Audiolab 7000A will drive more difficult speakers and certainly has greater bass impact, but you're primarily paying for extra power and features. 7000A has a very good DAC inside and HDMI eARC to facilitate seamless integration with a TV. I bet in a direct AB comparison, the 7000A will show itself to be a bit more resolving, but my point is, if you're judging purely on sound quality, I don't think the gap is that big, not big enough for me to think that I'm missing out anyway. So if I had an amplifier like the IO and I wasn't after extra grunt or connectivity, I wouldn't be trading it for something like a 7000A. I'd be saving my money till I could justify spending a little bit more. Not much to discuss in terms of setup. The Riga IO does have a headphone socket and a phono stage. I'm not much of a headphone listener, but I'd expect the built-in phono stage to be decent given Riga's reputation. I'm digital only until I can find a secure place to locate a turntable and one that aesthetically I and the rest of the family can live with. Most of my listening was done using an Aurelic Aries G1 streaming transport and Denifritz Venus 2 DAC, a wildly overpriced source to ensure that what was upstream was not limiting amplifier performance. I also used my Aurelic Aries Mini streamer that retailed for £450 when it was available just to make sure the wheels didn't fall off the I.O. with price appropriate sources. Stick with speakers that are easy to drive and you'll get a good sense of what the I.O. is capable of. You don't want transducers with big impedance swings tugging on a power supply of limited size. The £599 Q Acoustic 5020s are an excellent choice if you're striving for a very well balanced sonic delivery. The full sounding bass of the speakers provides a nice equilibrium to the amp's focus on the mids, whilst neither the 5020s or the IO can be considered recessed on top. But if you really want to hear the exceptional resolution and timing of the IO, the £799 Monitor Audio Silver 100s are the speakers to do just that. 
even though they do shift the tonal balance to the cooler side of the spectrum. I have to say that this combination provided the most detailed and accurate spatial presentation I've heard at anything near this price. Yeah, I'd like a little bit more body and warmth, but you practically never get everything, even when you spend a lot more money. The Dali Minio SEs are a lot more money at £1,499. These Uber revealing mini monitors did highlight the limit of the IO's resolution and refinement, but the £420 Little Riga amplifier didn't disgrace itself. If you were on a tight budget and already had the Minio SEs, the IO is the amplifier I'd recommend, but if you were putting together a system from scratch and looking to audition some Dali speakers, I'd suggest something in the sub £1,000 range, either from the Oberon or Opticon series. My Amphion Argon 1s aren't quite as resolving as the Minio SEs, but have a lot more low-end clout. Here it was apparent that the Baby Riga amp was struggling to deliver clean bass, even at moderate listening levels, averaging 80 decibels. My general advice is in small rooms stick with mini monitors. Their limited bass extension means that power shouldn't be too much of an issue. If you want more bass extension, you could always add a subwoofer. In medium sized rooms, I'd go for compact stand mounts. In the sub £1,000 category, they don't tend to be too demanding on amplification. In larger rooms, and if you listen at high levels, really, you're gonna be looking at a class AB amplifier with 30 watts per channel. There's plenty of other options. Although I would be curious to see how this little amplifier would get on with accessibly priced high sensitivity speakers like the Klipsch RP6000Fs or even the 8000Fs. The Zoo Dirty Weekends would also be an interesting investigation to see if an amplifier favouring sound quality trumps brute force with speakers that have a sensitivity rating in the mid 90s. The Riga IO is an excellent sounding no frills amplifier with exquisite resolution and timing, however the tone is a lot fuller than what you typically find with amplifiers that have those characteristics. The sound is a little mid-centric and forward and the soundstage could be a touch wider. Also the limited power means that some care needs to be taken with partnering speakers if you don't want to hear dynamic compression and that's even at moderate levels. But this is me nitpicking, not complaining for the £420 outlay. I must take my hat off to Riga. I can't imagine it makes much financial sense for them to design and build an amplifier in the UK that retails for just north of £400. Especially when you consider the cheapest offerings from name and exposure retail for over £1,500 and forget the entry point for Lynn products these days. The IO alongside the Cambridge Audio AXA35 is the best amplifier I've heard to date below £500 and that's why the Riga IO gets an outstanding from this channel. Okay, so I need your help. I've struggled this year to get amplifiers in for a review that retail for below a thousand pounds. And that's not because there aren't products out there, there are. But before I get something in for a review, I check out the design, the circuit topology and layout. And normally there's either something there that gives me cause for concern or at least some pause. So my question for today is what amplifiers below a thousand pounds would you like to see me review and the reasons why? Please share your experiences of living with those amplifiers if you own them. I'd love to hear about that in the comment section. I'm sure you know what to do by now. If you want to support me here and what I do, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Also check me out on Patreon. There's a couple of consultancy tiers you can access there if you think I can help you on your audiophile journey. Check out the ABA Club on Patreon, which has some great ways to interact with me and fellow Patreons. But for today, for now, British Audiophile, signing off.